Hey everyone, and welcome to episode eight of the Tech Ops Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Saavedra, the founder of MergerData.com. And today we're gonna to be going into the approach of data analytics and the perception of data analytics in the manufacturing industry. Oftentimes, data analytics is looked at as having convergent solution, solutions, but in reality, many of the solutions that data analytics provides are divergent in nature. And so we're going to dive into what that means, uh, convergent versus divergent. And then we're also going to talk about the implications of that and how you can modify your thinking to get better results when you're using data analytics in your day-to-day -day business, trying to make everything better. Now you might be wondering why this matters in the first place. And I think the definition of what convergent versus divergent thinking means is going to help us identify exactly why this is important. So typically people think of data analytics as a convergent process. That means that it comes to one correct solution. You can use all the logic and data and put it into your problem solving process and you'll come out with one final correct answer, kind of like mathematics and solving an equation. Now with divergent thinking, you end up having multiple solutions that could be correct. And it basically, you attack, you attack a problem and multiple solutions present themselves. And so when you're thinking of data analytics in a convergent nature, you're limiting yourself in terms of the impact that data can have. And you're probably getting to a point where you get all these numbers on a dashboard or in a report, and you're asking yourself, what now or so what and it doesn't really provide any answers for you or any insights and that's because thinking of data in a convergent manner it gives you the expectation of here's the correct answer do this which is just not the reality of business in general now especially when it comes to manufacturing a lot of the minds in manufacturing are looking for the one correct answer. If you change uh, certain variables with whatever product or engineering solution that you're building, you're going to get a different output and that's going to be a relatively defined output. And so it's hard to think the other way of, okay, we have this defined problem. Now we need to think of as many solutions as possible that could be correct. And with data analytics, that's exactly what you want to do. You want to see a problem and look at multiple data points and see how influencing different data points could get you the result that you're looking for, whether it's solving a problem, whether it's growing certain numbers or shrinking certain numbers. Now, this isn't to say that convergent thinking doesn't belong at all in data analytics. And in reality, what you should be doing and what has been most useful for me throughout my career is to rotate or not rotate to switch between convergent and divergent thinking almost as a iterative process. And so when you're trying to define the problem, you want to undergo convergent thinking and with analytics, you can get to a single number that is then defined as the problem. So whether that is your margin, right? You can see, okay, this is a number we're going to focus on. This is the problem. But once you define that problem, you need to cycle back out into the divergent frame, the divergent thinking process with data analytics. And so then that's the exploration phase where you need to be diving into numbers. You need to be approaching different numbers and seeing how you can maybe change a process or a habit or a behavior re related to a specific number in order to get the solution that you want. And so there might be five different answers that you get with data and five of those answers could be a possible solution to the problem that you defined. So now that you've gone through a convergent cycle to define your problem set, you can go through a divergent cycle to define the potential solutions. Then when you decide on one solution to go forward with, you now have another convergent line of thinking where you hammer into that specific path that you're gonna take and determine what action you're gonna take to attempt to solve the problem overall. If that problem is solved, 
congratulations, you solved your problem with data. If not, then what you do is you cycle back out to the divergent thinking process and you reassess the problem and come up with the solutions with the new data that you have from attempting one of the solutions. And so this cycle of uh, going from convergent thinking to divergent thinking is how data analytics should be approached. It shouldn't just be you, someone seeking out a singular correct answer from the start. That's just an abuse of the data analytics uh, specialty as a whole. And so we want to make sure that we're getting the most out of all of this effort and money that's going into these analytics projects. So if you've ever had that experience where you spend all this time looking at data and you just kind of say, okay, now what? Maybe take a different approach the next time and try to instead look at it as a resource that you can use to define multiple correct answers and multiple solutions using that resource of data. Now, obviously manufacturing is highly complex. It has a lot of variability, a lot of unknowns. Uh, there's a lot of, there, there's just so much data in the first place. It doesn't even make sense to try to come up with a one size fits all solution using data because there are so many variables in the, in the calculations that go into the data you collect and the data that you analyze. And so it only makes sense to instead come up with multiple solutions that could be correct depending on the various variables of your data set. So as a thought experiment, one useful way to categorize when it's right to use convergent versus when it's right to use divergent thinking in data is whether or not you're facing a, an engineering problem with a very defined environment, very defined inputs and outputs, or whether it's more of a business problem. And so a business problem, they're going to have, or they're going to have to do with things more around cost efficiency, speed, quality, uh, process efficiency, marketing and sales. And you can get scientific and get a bunch of data around these things, but the solutions are going to be much more varied in terms of what could potentially correct any issues you're seeing with those numbers in the first place. When it's an engineering problem, you change a material thickness or a material in itself or change the temperature of a system, it's going to have a more defined output and could be a solution to, to the problem, a redesign uh, of a part that's not working as expected and having a lot of failures could, so, could have a singular solution that provides the results you need, where a business problem is most likely not going to have a very clearly defined single solution that presents itself when you're looking at data. And so if I was to summarize this dis distinction in thinking, I would say that convergent thinking with data analytics is useful when you're trying to monitor specific data points. It's not something that you're using as a solution to a problem that's existing. So if you're just trying to monitor and look at things like cost per lead for marketing, if you're trying to monitor and look at scrap rate or cycle time or on-time delivery or total downtime, those are things that are convergent in, in its thinking. And so you can have, you know, sometimes one analyst uh, come up with all those metrics and build a system to monitor those. But the real value in analytics comes from divergent thinking and using it as a resource or a tool for that divergent thinking. So when you have those metrics that you monitor like a cycle time, if they go outside of the bounds that you would like, then you have just used convergent thinking to define a problem set. Now you have to use, now you should use data analytics to come up with multiple potential solutions to reduce that cycle time. So you do more of an exploratory analysis around what's causing that cycle time to fall outside of the bounds that you set. And this will vary depending on the organization. Oftentimes it'll be very complex because there's a lot of variables that go into these overall metrics that you're monitoring. But this is where the divergent thinking is so important because you can take each of these data points and you can say, okay, these are five potential solutions that the data is saying we should try. And so we're going to pick the one we think is the 
best opportunity to solve the problem, the, the cheapest, the fastest, whatever metrics you're, or whatever um, qualifications you're looking for in the solutions. And then we're going to use convergent thinking again to try out that solution that we chose. If it does work, we're done. If it doesn't work, then we use that data and go back to the divergent thinking and see if there is multiple solutions that exist with our new data that we added in and whether those are different from the ones we defined before. And so hopefully that example brings together why data analytics shouldn't just be looked at as a convergent field, uh, something that gives you a singular answer that's correct. It should be thought of as both a convergent and divergent field. So maybe it's a little different than what I initially said. It's not just divergent, um, but you should cycle through the different ways of thinking because otherwise you're just going to be sitting there and you're going to be wondering, what does all this mean? Why is this data not really telling me anything? And it might just be the approach that you're taking in terms of the thought process of what data analytics is. So that's it for this episode. Hopefully uh, this triggers some good ideas, maybe helps you think of a problem a little bit differently or a set of solutions a little bit differently. I'm Dan Saavedra, the founder of MergerData.com, and this was the TechOps podcast. Make sure to subscribe on whatever podcast platform that you use. Um, any likes, comments, or shares help us grow and help us get more interesting conversations.